Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Mineral Life. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, uh, the VW Frunk. Yesterday or a couple of days ago we talked about the car in general, my first impressions. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the front end of these two cars. So right in front of us right here is the car that you may be familiar with. This is the Model 3 that we took across country. So you come out here <clears throat> and you lift the uh, hood and bingo. Now you're looking at a lot of storage area. And as I said, when we were traveling, Corey and I were absolutely loving this little box. It was great for us to, uh, to store, store, do storage, have lots of extra things that we could put in here. It made it, uh, it made it fantastically easy. For closing, I did have problems, but then we found out how to adjust these two bump stops and no problem. So let's go over here and have a look at the VW. Now, we're a little tight, so I'm not gonna do it when I'm sitting down. Um, and it's convenient to do it from uh, a standing position here. So let's have a look. So here's my um, hood release. Um, nothing comes up to tell you that the hood has been released. Then we go over here and um, this has a secondary release. Okay, so you uh, kind of heavy, this is very heavy. Um, I have no clue why they've got it quite the way they have, but, um, but it's a heavy hood. And you remember we had the uh, shocks picking up the hood. This one here you pick up and you use a prop rod. <clears throat> um, the reason for that probably is because this thing is filled with stuff, okay? So when we look at this versus that, we're looking at, you know, the good old days versus what other people are doing. Now, let's start off with things that make this incredibly heavy. This is road-hugging steel. Um, and steel's good. I like steel if I've got high volumes and, um, and, um, and I, I need the characteristics that steel gives, but it's not my first choice for everything. Unfortunately, for these guys, it is. Now, you'll notice that there's these big air gaps here. In Europe, they have a thing for um, head impact. So if you hit a pedestrian, which we try not to do here in the US, then their head will bang into the top. Here, let me put this down a bit so you can see. Their head bounces into that, and this is supposed to deflect enough so that the guy doesn't die or, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe isn't uh, totally, uh, totally incapacitated. Um, this is something we don't normally see in, uh, in North American designs, but this adds a tremendous amount of weight. Now, I don't know why they chose to use steel here because the worst enemy of electric vehicles is weight, and this is pretty heavy. The, uh, the hood over here on the uh, Tesla is made out of aluminum, and that's where most people are going. Most people want to have light. They want to have it so that it'll, it'll, um, <clears throat> it'll be easy for someone to, uh, to lift the hood and, and I can get rid of weight. So there's cost associated with that, with aluminum, but at the end of the day, it's usually the right way to go. So let's, let's move over a little bit um, to, um, I'm gonna start here on the right and work to the left. So these are bump stops, and um, these are the one, things that hold the hood in, make it flat and so it doesn't wiggle and things like that. Now, I pointed out that there's two bump stops on the, um, on the Tesla, but with this shorter hood, for some reason or other, they have four. Now, these things also have these crush cans right here. These little crush cans are, again, for head impact. So if you're ahead or you hit a pedestrian or whatever, then the guy is going to whack into that. And then these collapse. You can see right here that they're made to break away and crush down. These things are quite heavily um, um, mounted. So you can see here that there's a, um, there's a bolt holding it in this place, and it's also mounted here to the headlamp. So when this goes down, this is gonna be probably taking part of the headlamp with it. So there's gonna be a fair amount of uh, damage that's gonna go in, in and around this area. And like I say, this has got four, where Tesla has two. 
kind of an interesting deal. Okay, so let's move over to the fuse box. Okay, so when we look at a fuse box here, <coughs> there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen fuses. These are relays. There's 18 fuses in here, plus an area that we don't know what it is for, but it's for an 80 amp fuse. It, but right now, it's not, uh, it's not attached. The big question, of course, is if I have 18 fuses, uh, wh which one does what? Tragically, that is usually put on the, on the bottom side of the cover. And if you look here, you, you don't see anything. The worst part is, <clears throat> to find it, you've got to find F whatever. And the only way you find that is by pulling the fuse out. So now I'm going to ask the big question. How many people watched the previous Tesla teardowns? You can, uh, you can silently say uh, I did. That would be good. But, uh, um, but I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to, for, uh, for those people who didn't see the original teardowns, there are none. They have fuses that, uh, that reconnect. They're not fuses like this, that, that uh, when they fail, they're done. You pull them out, put a new one in. Tesla has none of these. So we're kind of like in a, in a bit of a quandary as to why there's so many here. And we also are suspecting that there's some for the, uh, for the rest of the car somewhere else. We haven't bumped into them yet. So let's put the cap back on here. And let's move over to uh, the next interesting thing that we found. So good news, I love this washer bottle. You can tell right away what's supposed to go in here. It's got a nice sign on it. It's not black, it's blue, so you can actually see things. So that's a good deal. I like that. And it has this cute thing. You can pull it out of the way. And I, and I question was, why? I mean, that's a battery. I guess we need serviceability to the... Um, the 12 volt battery that's here, but what else could there possibly be? Well, we tried looking around. We couldn't find anything until someone reached under here and found this hidden tag, which is for, as you can see, the fireman. So whatever is going on here, um, if you're a fireman, you need to know about it. But unfortunately, it's tucked nicely in here where you can't find it. <clears throat> so let's put this back on. Yep, let's put this back on and go to the next thing that I found interesting. Maybe it's the thing that uh, we should have talked about originally, but um, how much can you put in here uh, versus what Tesla put in over there? All right, we're not looking here at a whole lot of anything as far as room is concerned. And our, our questions became manifold. Like, why is, why is it that they have lots of room and this has not so much room. So <clears throat> one of the things that is good, let's have a look at it here. This has got this um, wonderful uh, little, um, little compartment here. Okay, and you can see that you can get at your filters. Normally these are really difficult to get at and they're usually underneath your instrument panel and whatnot. Um, so this one's very accessible, easy to get at and you have the ability to put a dual system in here. So if you have a, uh, a child with, uh, a well, if you have asthma or your child has asthma, then um, this is, this is extra, extra good. Okay, so let's move on to something that uh, scares the daylights out of me. We're going we're gonna to have a quick look here. This is the post that you're going to use if you need to jump your car. Um, and this, um, this um, cross car support um, is right beside it. Now, for those who don't know much about cars, um, the uh, car itself is one of the conducting um, elements, okay? And it's the negative side, and this is the positive side, and I've got this cross car beam right here that's right in the way. So let's give you a little demonstration. Okay, so um, we have a cable here 
Um, we can see that the positive, sorry, the negative is over there, and we've got, we've got the positive here, which is the hot side. And now we thought if this thing is, um, if this bar is, um, is basically the same as that, what happens if I attach this to that post? All right. Now, <clears throat> if it isn't coated properly, it's going to spark and that is going to be a bad thing. But let's just see what happens. Nothing. So the good news here is that what we thought might be a potential problem has been solved probably because this post is non-conductive. It's been coated with something to keep it from conducting from the negative to the positive if you're trying to hook up your 12 volt, uh, 12 volt uh, uh, jump. Okay, so, so anyway, now that we've had a look at the, um, um, at the battery post and we figured, okay, well that's, that's a good idea, it's nice and safe. Let's have a look at this brace. This brace is basically here to hold up the HVAC system. The HVAC system, as I showed you a second ago, um, that's where the uh, filters are and whatnot. That was a good idea, but I, I'm really shocked at, at how, much, um, how much beefier this is than what I'd normally expect to see. This has got lots of uh, road-hugging weight, again, that um, I can't understand. Um, I don't know why I would do that as an engineer. This is kind of like overdone. <clears throat> We, um, we can see that there's lots going on underneath, but we're going to have a, um, a hoist review in a little bit, and so we'll, we'll check that out later. But at the end of the day, um, what we're looking at here is um, a lot of stuff that normally we would see either under the instrument panel or we wouldn't see at all in an electric vehicle. We're a little bit um, dismayed that, uh, that uh, Volkswagen didn't take advantage of what could be good space for an operator to utilize or for a, an owner to utilize. So with that, let's wrap it up. Thank you again, boys and girls, for watching. Um, keep tipping those cashiers.